Hello once again all my fellow Fixit employees out there. Welcome back to another episode of How to Satisfactory. And today, no, I'm not going to do any kind of long-winded intro or anything. What we're going to do is just basically kind of jump into what we are doing. This is part two of running an efficient factory. Basically setting up all the machines as efficiently as we need them to be right now at the moment. Last episode, we set up work on all of our steel over here. And uh, I think we did a pretty good job on that, though there is some room for improvement. I don't really think we need it right now. Everything is running pretty smoothly as far as steel goes. Today, I want to try to work on the rest of all the machines and make sure everything is going good, such as fixing all of our copper, like wire, cable, all of that. And uh, then kind of looking at iron as well, because there uh, seems to be a lot more iron pieces coming in than what we need for our machines and that's kind of clogging up the system. So we got to take care of that. All right, so without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is come up to the top floor and we're going to take a look at every one of our machines and make sure that they are at 100% efficiency. I already know that this one right here, this is similar right here that's making automated wiring is not efficient. This one is at 27%. I think the one on the other side said like 29 or something. Now, if we look at this, we can kind of get an idea of why it's not being efficient. For one thing, our cable right here. It uh, looks like it's going to need 50 cable per minute in order to run this machine at 100%. And that, that's a lot of cable, to be honest. So that is our problem right here on why we're... Oh, it's getting lower. <laughs> All right, so we're just, essentially we're just not making enough cable. So that's one thing we have to fix. If we look at this machine, we can see we've got it set to 2.5 per minute, 50% clock speed. It's getting 100% efficiency right here, as you can see. And the modular frames and steel beams are all coming in fine, so we don't really need to improve upon modular frames or steel beams. So, so far, we know we just have to improve upon cable. Now, let's look at our last machine up here on top. And this one is at 100%. Steel pipes and wire are coming in just fine. We've got the machine set to, uh, let's see, 4 per minute at 80% clock speed. But... One thing I want to go over is if we go to the other side, we need to check these two. Don't just go by what those sides say because the, all the parts and stuff are getting split up. So if we look at this one, we can see it's 69%. And the obvious reason for that, we're getting plenty of steel pipes. We're not getting enough wire. So it looks to me like one of the things we're going to have to work on today is wire for the most part and cable. Don't stop there though, check your other machines over here too, just make sure that's 100% that is, and this one over here is at 27%, again, mostly because of the cable. Stators aren't a problem, but we gotta get the cable working. So after looking at the efficiency of those machines, I can already see exactly what we have to work on. Number one priority being cable. There is definitely not enough cable being made. Cable is being made from wire, so maybe we need to make more wire in order to make more cable, which we already need to make more wire anyway. So uh, yeah, let's hop down to that level and get started on that. All right, so let's take a look at our cable machine here. All right, so currently we're making 100% clock speed, making 30 per minute. Now I just happen to have about three power charts still left on me from the last episode. So if we throw these in here, let's just throw them all in there and max this out as much as possible, we're going to be making 75 per minute. Well, we need 100 and 75 is not gonna cut it in order to produce that. However, don't be disheartened. We can still fix this and we won't even have to add in a second one of these machines. Let's head over here to one of our assemblers here that's making the automated wiring, which needs the cable. All right, so we're making 2.5 automated wiring in a minute. Do we actually need 2.5 per minute? Although that would be nice, I don't really think we do because uh, that's gonna cause us to use a lot more cable than what we need to. Let's uh, tone this clock speed down a little bit. So let's say 80%, that's two per minute. That's going to need 40 cable per minute. I love the fact that it tells you now in parentheses exactly how many it's going to make before it finishes the next piece. Like that. Uh, that's that's a really nice feature they added. Love that touch. Uh, so let's see. 80% would be 40 per minute. And that's still going to be 80 if we count these by 2. Still more than we can actually produce. So you know what? Let's try 75. Let's see what 75 is. That's 1.88 per minute. That's 37.5 per minute. And you know what? I'm thinking if we take 37.5 and we divide that by 2. Or actually, no, that's multiply. We multiply that by 2. 
Uh, that's 75. That's exactly how many we need. So, all right. So we could totally make this work with 37.5 per minute cable coming in, and that would be using every single bit of the cable that we are making. I don't really like that idea too much because that leaves absolutely nothing to go into storage for where we'll, we'll need cable in storage because we're going to have to grab it out on occasion. So I'm kind of thinking, what if we change this to 1.75 per minute? That's 70% clock speed. That is going to be, looks like uh, 35 a minute. That's going to leave, yeah, you know what? It doesn't leave a lot of cable going in storage, but that is per minute. And as much as we're going to be grabbing in there and as much as we have in there already, I think that's going to work. Let's set the clock speed to 70% on our automated wiring assemblers. Don't forget to come over here to the other side and do the same thing. Now, one option, and I've seen people post this in comments and stuff for me as well, is you can just copy the settings from one and then come over here and paste them to another. Um, however, I've seen if you do this, it actually takes all the inventory out of the machine and puts it into your inventory and then starts it over fresh. So instead, I would much rather just do this. Uh, if we just do change these over to being... 1.75. I prefer to just type it in. It uh, it doesn't take all the material out, doesn't put it in your inventory, keeps everything in there that's already in there, and that works better for me in my case. However, if you do prefer to just copy and paste the settings, the buttons are there, they're totally there for you to do it, you do you. All right, so let's come back down here to our constructor right here that's making the cable. Uh, with our three power shards in there, that is 75 per minute, that's gonna be exactly what we need. Uh, however, if you look, it's taking 150 wire per minute, and that is a lot of wire. So, I have a thought on how to fix this, and that is basically we're going to take and combine all of the wire into one thing, and then just take off what we need and head into this you know, uh, machine down here to make the cable. The rest of it's going to go into the other machines that need it. Uh, so essentially instead of just having these two machines that only run the cable, which is a uh, kind of how I had it before, but now I guess we're going to go back to that because that worked better. <laughs> uh, but anyway, yeah, we're going to kind of fix this here, combine all the wire into one, and then split it off to only send what we need into there and send the rest up the other way. I think that'll work best because I've actually tried this uh, the other way. I've tried to only do these two machines to make enough wire to send to that. And it is doable, but you're going to need a lot more power shards than what we are actually gonna be able to find. And it just, it's gonna to take too long to gather up all the power shards. Uh, so instead, I have another thought on where to get power shards from. If we come down here to the bottom floor and take a look, you will notice we've got all kinds of iron rods, screws, everything that is just backing up the line down here. We're producing a lot more of these than are actually needed. And this is because I think we never actually set these up from after we made the changes to uh, the alternate recipes on the second floor. So therefore we're still using the regular recipes and producing enough material to make that. And I think we can actually fix this. So if we head up to the second floor here, all right, so let's take a look at our machines here on the second floor. The first one here is making rotors, and it needs 11.25 copper sheets per minute and 97.5 screws. All right, you also notice the efficiency on this is not great. And I believe this is because of the copper sheets. Just kind of looking here. So we're going to need to make more copper sheets too. Again, this is all falling back to copper being the biggest issue down here. But uh, as far as screws we're only needing like 97.5 per minute so if we can we're obviously making a lot more than that so let's go down and take a look down here i've already checked and i don't believe any of these other machines use screws nope not there not here or this last machine also does not use screws all right so the only one using screws is this first machine and it needs 97.5 per minute well, let's see how many we're making all right, so these first two machines here on the ground floor are making our screws. Let's take a look here. Uh, we're making a hundred per minute here, and we're making a hundred per minute here. We're making 200 screws a minute, and we only need a hundred. That means there are a hundred screws plus going into storage every minute. That's backing up our lines quite a bit. We could totally fix this. You know what, if we just take out 
one of these. That makes 75. We don't need that. Let's take out another one. There we go. Let's just make this 100%. Look at it. We just recovered two power shards from this that we don't actually need to use in these anymore. Now, later on, we might, but for now, we don't necessarily need them. So I'm going to go ahead and grab all of our power shards out of these two screw machines. And let's go to the other side over here and do the same thing. All right, so we'll take the power shards out of here and get to this machine here and take the power shards out of this one and this one. And there we go. All right, so now that's 50 and 50. That's 100. We only need 100 up there. That's going to send 2.5 screws per minute into storage. We already have an entire thing of storage full of screws. 2.5 per minute each side. That's, that's five screws a minute going into storage. You know what? It's fine. I think that will work absolutely fine. We don't need that many going into storage. It's just going to, you know, as you can see, block up the lines here and cause everything else to slow down. So let's just uh, fix it that way. But let's not stop there. Let's take a look at other things. All right. So these machines are our iron rods. We're currently producing 30 in this one and obviously probably 30 in this one as well right yeah all right that's 60 iron rods a minute we're making well what machines use our iron rods let's go take a look all right so first machine making rotors nope doesn't need iron rods uh let's see here our reinforced iron plates uses plates and wire nope not using that all right our next machine is making smart plating uses reinforced iron plates and rotors so that's not using iron rods all right, and coming down here to our last machine, and there it is, the modular frames. Modular frames are using 2.25 reinforced per minute and nine iron rods per minute. Nine, nine iron rods a minute. Well, we're making 60 iron rods a minute. We're making so many more than we actually need. Uh, we also have this set to 75%. So, you know what? Let's make that 100%. All right, so at 100% clock speed, that's going to take three reinforced iron plates and 12 iron rods per minute. Mm, that's still quite a few iron rods that we don't really need. So, but let's see. Uh, also, we're needing more reinforced plates, so let's make sure we haven't messed that up. Let's come down here. We're making five a minute. Yeah, that's that's fine. That's totally fine. That's 100%. Let's not mess with that any further. Uh, Alright, so let's go over here to the other side, fix the same machine over here. Let's make sure that is set to 100%. There we go. Alright, so that's 12 on this side, 12 on the other. Total of 24, but you know, we're making these on both sides. So let's come down here. Let's go back to our iron rods. And we're making 30 per minute. We don't really need that much. Uh, let's take that out and that out. Uh, okay, so that's 15 in this machine. And 15 in this machine if we take out the power shards. All right. Well, that's uh, still a bit much. What if we put this at 75%? All right. At 75%, it is making 11.25 per minute. We needed, what, 12 up there? That's only one of these machines. You know what? We can just put this at 50%. Honestly, 50%. 7.5 per minute. Okay. That works. Come over here to this one. Do the same thing. Set that to 50%. There we go, and yeah, that seems all right to me. That's 15 per minute. We only need 12, that's three rods per minute going into storage. That'll work for me. Now remember guys, don't forget to come over here to our other side and take out the power shards over here and set these to 50% as well. All right, so there we go. We're now making 15 on one side, 15 on the other. That's a total of 30, we only need like 24 all together that'll work not to mention we now actually have like 16 power shards to play with that's that's a nice amount of power shards let's take one more look here at our plates though we're making 20 plates per minute in this one and i believe we're making 20 plates in this machine and yeah so that's a total of 40 plates all together being made how many do we actually need up top let's go look all right, so the only machine up here that's needing plates right now is this one right here, the alternate stitched iron plate, and it uses 18.75. All right, well, we're using, what, we're making 40 total, I believe? Is that what I counted down here? Yeah, we're making like, okay, so we can totally just grab this to put this to like 50% as well. There we go. Now, while we're doing this is A, 
it doesn't put as many parts into the lines that are extra, so it's not clogging up the lines. And B, we're actually saving power here as well. Not as much as we used to after update seven, but it still works. All right, so there we go. If we put that at 50%, we're now making 20, and that will work just fine. Now comes the fun part of even more math. The entire thing about efficient factories is math. Now I am horrible at math, but I can still kind of figure this much out. Um, so let's take a look here. We need 15 iron ingots for our iron plates in each machine. That's 15 and 15, so that's 30. All right, we come down here to our iron rods. We need 7.5 in each of these. That's another 15, so that's 15, 15, that's 30, that's 45. And how many iron rod or uh, iron ingots do our screws need? Uh, 12.5 per minute. All right, so that's 25. All right, so 45 plus 25. We don't have to do the math ourselves. We do have a little ingram calculator. Just hit N on your keyboard to bring this up. So 25 plus 45 is equal to 70. So we only need a total of 70 iron ingots coming through here. How many are we actually making down here? Let's take a look. So I calculated all of those up for every machine that we needed the ingots for. And I actually didn't need to do that because I kind of forgot this machine by itself produces the ingots just for the screws down here. So that was 12.5 in each of those machines. That's 25. So we need to make sure that this machine here is producing 25 iron ingots. We're producing like double that right now. So let's take that out. Let's take that out. That's producing 30 per minute. Um, I'm going to keep it at 100% and take both of those uh, power shards out. Now we're a total of 18 power shards. That That's great. And we're producing 30 ingots. So that's a few more ingots than we need. But better to have them and not need them than need them and not have them. We can go down here to the other side and do the exact same thing down here. All right, there we go. Take both the shards out of this smelter, and we're now making 30 ingots, which is more than enough. But and you know what? While we're over here, I kind of forgot to set these machines at 50% as well. So let's do that. 50%. And come over here to this machine and set it to 50% as well. All right, so that leaves us with three, no, four. Four other smelters here making iron ingots. All right, so let's take a look here. We know we need 45 total on each side now these two here are making enough for that line so if we take this out and we take this out that's 30 we take this one out we take both of these shards out of this one that's 30 that's still more than enough uh, again we can make it a little more efficient here if we let's see we know we need 45 which is uh, what is that 45 divided by 2 uh, 22.5 so each of these machines need to produce 22.5 we'll say 23 a minute so I'll just say make 23 a minute there we go and come over here do the same thing on this one 23 a minute I then come over here to our other two and do the same thing on these two so go down here select that change it to 23 per minute come over here grab these two out 23 per minute all right so that fixes all the machines on the bottom floor all of the smelters are now making enough so i think everything on this bottom floor is as efficient as we can make it we now have to look at our miners so let's take a look at our miners. have we overclocked these we've not we're making 120 per minute though we don't really need that i don't feel like let's uh let's change this to 50 percent that's 60 we'll save power and saving power is good we don't want to mess with the power again just yet so i'm going to go to all three of my machines here and change these to 50 percent now it's 50 percent exactly what i need let me make sure that i have that set correctly all right so i know that this one runs in here and it splits into these two machines so let's see uh this one needs 30 and this one needs 23 yeah that's that's enough um and then we'll come down here to these two mm, 23 and 23 that's like uh 46 that's more than enough because i'm pretty sure we're producing let me just double check one more time 
yeah, 60 per minute in each of these miners right here. That is perfect. All right, we have everything on the bottom floor now set up to be as efficient as we possibly can make it. Not only that, we have a total of 28 power shards to work with over here for our copper. Now, let's head back up to our copper line. All right, so let's take a look at our cable machine once again here. All right, so we have three power shards in here to make 75 cable per minute. That's going to need 150 wire per minute. That, my friends, is a lot of wire. That's a whole lot of wire. Now, the way we have it set up is this machine right here is actually taking all the wire from these two machines. These two machines making wire are only feeding that machine down there for cable. So we could totally just go ahead and throw three power shards in here. Boom, like that. And we would be making 75 wire per minute on this side. If we did the same thing on that side over there, then yeah, that would be enough. That would be 150 wire. 75 plus 75 is 150. That would feed our cable machine. That would totally work. We could do that. However, I think Honestly, if we did that, it would throw things out of whack because the other machines, if we look at this one, that's going to need, uh, let's see, throw three shards in there like so, turn that up. It's going to need 37.5 ingots per minute in this machine alone. And, you know, we got all the copper ingots coming down through here being taken out as they're needed. And I think it's just going to throw these two machines out of whack and it's going to throw the entire system out of whack. So I don't like doing that. So let's take our power shards back out. Of these two machines now you could do that and eventually it would balance itself out uh, at least I think anyway but rather than just kind of assume that it's going to do that or wait for it to balance itself out I like this idea better let's go down here let's take out this belt right here and actually you know what let's take out all of this system right here in general so let's take out that right there feeding into that machine take out that let's turn this one into making wire let's come over here let's do the same thing on this one select recipe wire throw our three shards in there max these out do the same thing over here on this one throw our three shards in there boom 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 max it out all right Let's take and put a splitter, or I guess a merger, actually, is what we need here. Yeah, merger, there we go. And make sure it's turned the right way and on balance there. There we go. That looks good. Let's throw our belts in here. And again, you should have Mark three now selected and building with them. If you don't remember or you didn't do that, just hit your tab or actually your Q key to go into your build menu, go up to logistics, find your Mark III conveyor belts, and then press the number key corresponding to what hotbar you want it as. So like I have mine as my number three key on my hotbar, so I just highlight the conveyor belt Mark III here and hit three and that will change it to three. Now, whenever I hit three, I have that. All right, let's go ahead and put throw that into that. There we go. Look at all that wire being fed into that cable machine right now from these two machines. I like this much better. All right, so now we need to go up here. Let's take these two machines. We're going to change these into making copper sheets. Where's the copper sheets? Ah, oh, there they are. Copper sheets. And copper sheets. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and take these belts out right here. And take the floor hole. Basically, we're just going to mess with all of this right here. All right, so now that we've cleaned up all the lines and mergers and everything in the middle here with these four machines, we should make sure that all four of these machines right here, not these, this one, this one, this one, and this one, are all making copper sheets. Once you have that all set up, let's copy a merger. Let's turn it going that way towards the cable machine and put that one right there. And let's put the other one in between this one, lining it up. I'll just jump up on top of this one so I can line it up perfectly. That looks good to me. Yeah. All right. Put our belts through here. Boom. Connect. 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 All right. Perfect. And then from here, 
We can just use a Mark III lift, which I have set for five on mine. Push that down and turn that facing that direction towards that wall over there. And we don't actually have to touch any of these machines up here. These machines here are fine. We can leave them as they are. Now we do need to get underneath of here though, because we got to make some fixes down here. All right, so we are no longer running this line right here of the wire, so we don't need that. And this line right here, which was coming out from the other one, we'll just change this up here like that. There we go. And we'll run a line coming up through here into that. Make sure that's straight. Yeah, that's straight. All right, so just bring it out from that splitter down there into there. There we go. All right, so our copper sheet's running fine now. Our wire down here is running fine. We've got a coal line coming up through here. Yeah, everything looks good. Let's leave it as it is. Hop back up here. Put our plate back. Boop. Fix our floor there. All right, now let's take a look and let's see exactly how much copper sheeting and how much wire we need for every machine to run. So again, we're gonna come back up here into our machine area. We're gonna look at every one of these machines and we're gonna take a look here. So this one doesn't need wire or sheeting, all right? Same thing for this one, doesn't need that. All right, come down here to this next machine. Third machine down, needs wire. Needs a uh, 37.5 wire per minute. Now, I'm actually going to write this down as soon as I find a pen. I got a little sheet of notepad here, so I'm gonna write that down, 37.5. This way I can keep a rough estimate kind of going and I don't forget, because I have a tendency to forget things. So having a notepad handy while you're playing this game isn't a bad idea. All right, and this one is copper sheets, and we are making 11.25. Okay, so 11.25. Now we're gonna multiply that by two because obviously the same machines on the other side are making the exact same things and need that as well. Now let's head up to our top floor. I still am trying to get to the top floor using this ladder right here. I probably should fix that at some point, but uh, we'll get to that later. All right, let's check these machines. Now I know this one also needs wire. This one needs 32 wire a minute. Okay, so 32. And of course the machine on the other side over there also needs that. So that's 32 and 32. Let me just double check that and yeah, make sure all my stuff is right. All right, so I don't believe any of these other machines need any of those parts. Nope, and no. Nope. Okay, so let me run the numbers here for a second. All right, so looking at just copper wire, we are going to come up with 37.5 times 2, which is equal to 75. And then we also have the 32 times 2, which is equal to 64. So that's a total of about 139 copper wire we're needing all together. All right, so we know that. And then we have the copper sheets, which is 11.25 times 2. That is 22.5, okay. All right, so now we are back down here into our copper construction hall, and we are down here on the end. So all four of these machines right here, the first four, are all making wire. And all these machines are sending all of the wire they make up to the assemblers. Those down there on the end are making it for the cable, so that's fine. We don't need to calculate that, just these four here. Each of these machines is making 30 per minute. All right, we know that we need about 140 wire per minute. So if we bring up our calculator, let's see, 140 divided by, let's see here, uh, by four machines is 35 in each machine. Now you remember, if I calculated everything right, we actually came up with we only needed 139 wire for all of them. So that means each of these machines is gonna send one extra wire down the line and that's for storage. And you know what? That's fine. One, that's uh, that's four wire per minute going into storage. It doesn't seem like a lot, but when you're not grabbing it out of storage as often, then yeah, it, it, it adds up in the long run. So I think that'd be fine. So if we set this to, let's see, we're gonna have to throw at least one of these in there and 35. There we go. Okay, that's 116.6667%. Yeah, that'll work. Uh, all right, so for this one, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to copy the settings, and then we're gonna go to each of these other machines like this, and we're going to throw a shard in there and hit paste. All right, and you will notice, see how it reset it? It took all the copper ingots out, 
and it put the copper ingots that are in there into my inventory yeah so that's what happens when you use copy and paste but since we have to do four machines i don't really want to mess with it also you don't even have to worry with putting the power shard in there as long as you have a power shard in your inventory you can just hit paste it sets that up for you that's a nice little feature didn't know it did that until just then all right so there we go we have all of these machines making 35 wire each so a total of 140 wire that's pretty good we also have a bunch of iron ingots or copper ingots in our inventory let's just go ahead and get rid of those just drop them we don't need any ingots taking up our inventory space all right so that satisfies all the requirements for copper wire and cable that should make every machine up there efficient at this point uh except for the copper sheeting now how many copper sheets are we making per minute we have what four machines making copper sheets right each of these machines are producing let's see here 10 per minute uh we we have 40 copper sheets being made every minute that's a lot of copper sheets okay we only need what was it i said 22.5 uh yeah we don't really need that many copper sheets okay so let's do this let's um let's see how many do i need in each one um 22.5 divided by four that's five six yeah, if we do six per minute or eh, yeah if we do six per minute that will probably be fine all right so we'll just change that over to six there we go and that's 60 percent copy the settings and then we change all of these over paste paste and paste there we go all right so each of those are now making six per minute that that should be enough and it'll send a few more down the line extra as well okay that should work out fine and now we just have to figure out how many ingots total we need to produce up at our smelters so for this one what we'll do is we'll just come down here all right so we're making let's see 37.5 here i'm just going to go ahead and write these numbers down so 37.5 this one needs 12 this one should also be 12 all right so that's a total of 24 and then last but not least is our wire machines up here which need 17.5 times 2 because there's two of these machines so that is 35 so now all we need to do is just throw these numbers into our calculator here so 37.5 .7, plus let's see here 24 plus um 35 yeah 35 equals 96.5 okay so 96.5 is what we need and we have two smelters feeding these 96.5 divided by two each of these smelters needs to produce about 48.5 all right so uh let's see if i throw that in there that's 45 a minute okay uh if we do one more i hate to do that but let's do uh instead of 47 48.5 is that what i needed let me check uh, yeah 48.25 let's just do 50 per minute that's 100 on each side right yeah that's 50 50 here 50 there 50 here 50 there that seems fine let's go ahead and do that so we'll copy these settings put them into each of these smelters and paste there we go all right so that's going to set up all of our smelters now to make that and that should produce that so now we need uh, a total of what 200 copper it's 50 yeah we need a total of 200 copper coming down this line all right so let's head up here to our copper node over here now in the last video i mistakenly said that this was a poor node it's actually a normal node so yeah um as you can see here we've got this rock kind of grew back in here i'm not going to worry with that right now how much are we making 120 in here what is this a mark ii all right so if i throw this in here like that that produces 180 Ooh. uh okay one more produces 240 well we need 200 let's do 200 per minute all right there we go so 166 that number seems to pop up a lot it's 200 per minute we'll feed that however we need to fix these belts so we're going to go ahead 
and convert these belts over to Mark III now, like so. Make sure you get every section going all the way into that. And do not forget the lifts as well. We also have to make sure the lift is a Mark III. All right, so now those belts can handle all of the copper coming down through here into our factory. And then we can come over here and these belts should be fine, but I'm just gonna go ahead and just fix all these belts as Mark III. All right, Mark three and Mark three. There we go. So all of those are now Mark three. I'm just going to go ahead and do the same thing over here as well. And every belt that I see, I'm going to go ahead and turn that into a Mark three. I'm a poet and I didn't know it. Make sure you get the ones feeding into our constructors as well. Don't forget those little guys. Also, do not forget that your lifts are here as well. Make sure those are also set up as Mark III lifts. All right, so at this point, every one of our machines now in our copper area should be working efficiently. If we take a look at some of the stats right now, you will see that some of them are a little lower, like 31% on this one. It just hasn't caught up yet. If you give it enough time, everything will work out and everything will be 100%. We just got to wait. Like, I'm pretty sure everything has to feed down through here and kind of get caught up a little bit. Like, as we see here, this one is now at like 96%. And down through here, if you want to speed it up a little bit more, you could always just pull more copper ore coming in through here, and that will also work. It won't hurt to, of course, just upgrade that and do a little more. We already had the power shard in there with extra, so yeah, you could totally do that. All right, so I let the game run while I went and took a shower, and let's take a look now and see if everything is running efficiently. Yes, all right. So we got our wire down here getting everything it needs. It is running at 100% efficiency. If we check this one, 100%, 100%. Let's see, that just leaves, is our cable. Yes, cable is at 100%. All right, so one more thing to do to make sure that everything is running correctly. And that is we need to fix smart splitters instead of regular splitters in some cases. For the first one, it's right here. So that our cable comes down through here splits here now this is just a normal conveyor splitter it goes down that way into the area that goes up to our top floor machines that need the cable and then it goes to the right right here so that it can then go down over and into storage now i also believe yes all right so we also have it going this way here to go across that way which it then goes up to storage as well or not storage but to the machines on the right hand side top floor so what we need to do is go ahead take out this regular splitter right here take out that one as well all right and then we are going to grab a smart splitter so let's get that here smart splitter there we go have it coming in this way like that that looks right there we go let's run our belt into this there we go and of course we're going to run that another belt out through here just connect that there and let's set up our smart splitter so to the right is going to be overflow to the center is going to be cable and to the left is also going to be cable right there all right so now that should be running what it should do is split it going center and left so that it takes half the load that way, the other half that way. Anything that gets backed up and overloaded will go to the right and then down into what we have down there, which is our storage. Now, I'm also going to go ahead and replace the conveyor lift with a Mark III conveyor lift here as well, just to make sure that everything is functioning right and going the way it should. Uh, to the front, yeah, I don't have to replace that. Well, I do because we do want this to be Mark III. So we'll replace all the belts down that way. And yeah, that should do that one. So the cable is now fixed. Obviously, we want to replace all of these lines with Mark III lines. Uh, we'll do that towards the end though. Right now, just kind of fix what you need to. All right, and let's drop down to a floor below us here. Now we have our sheets are coming in here. All right, so this is where our sheets come in at and they're going down that way where they then go into a splitter going up into storage. And also they're going here, splitting this way to go into the left-hand side. I think they go up right here and into the 
right side of our area. So what we need to do here is not necessarily replace this with a smart splitter, but we want to go down all the way down here to where this is. Because this is where it splits it out to go to storage and going up to that machine there. The other side doesn't do it, so we want to split it evenly that way. And then we want to cut it off here. So let's go ahead and take out this smart splitter, this belt, and eh, let's go ahead and take out that belt too. There we go. We'll go ahead and take these out too. Why not? We, we can totally do that. All right. Uh, looks like I've got extra inventory or something. Yeah, I've got too much inventory. Let's see. What do I have on me? That. And I've got tons of ores. We'll take the get rid of that. There we go. All right. All right, so what we want to do now is take a smart splitter. So let's make sure we have the smart splitter. Don't do a regular splitter. It has to be the smart one. And we'll put that right underneath of that belt right there, right on the edge. That'll do it. All right, go ahead and connect our belts back with Mark III. Connect that up to where it needs to go there. There. All right, and then we'll go ahead and grab a conveyor lift right here. And we'll connect it to the smart splitter down here first. Up. And if we turn it, it will connect automatically to that belt right there, which is great. That means we don't have to mess around with putting a piece here, putting a floor hole in to get it to the same height. That works. Last but not least, go ahead and connect from that belt down to here, like so. And then we're going to set up our smart splitter. So the center will be overflow, and the left will be copper sheets. So there we go, copper sheets. All right. So all the copper sheets is coming down this line. We'll now then go up over into that and then up to where it's got to go. And the last one is going to be our wire. So I'm looking at this one. I already have a smart splitter right there. So we have to come down here to the bottom floor right in front of here where it goes up to the machine that needs the wire there right before it goes down into the area to get out in the storage right there. I already have one set up here. I did it in an earlier episode. And yeah, there we go. That's a smart splitter with it going overflow to the that way and anything else going up to the machine. So that should have it everything set right. I'm just going to make sure all of our machines are running efficiently and fix any issues that we are having right now at the moment. All right, there is one more smart splitter we're going to have to put into place. If we come all the way back up here to our original area of our factory down here on the bottom floor. I have a smart splitter over here for the rods that is taking care of that. I also have one for all the screws, but we never fix the smart splitter for the iron plates. So we'll do that real quick. So go ahead and copy that splitter right there and put it right underneath of it like that. It doesn't have to be facing any particular way or anything. Delete that one and then copy that and turn it into a smart one. Make sure it's facing the right way like that. There we go. We can del delete that one underneath that. So the reason we put that there is that we that way we could place one on top of it and it'd be just the right height. All right, so now we just select this overflow for the center and to the right will be iron plate. All right, that should do the trick. Let's see if we got anything coming down through here. Not sure just yet. We'll just go ahead and delete that that and let's see uh, that one there right there and then go ahead and bring a mark three belt down here i'm going to bring mine to right about there and then in make sure that's straight yeah that's straight connect that well let's see it looks like we could just go ahead and convert that and then connect onto that and then get up here and grab it it's kind of a little hard to do here but grab from there all the way down to there and I've already done the other side there so now all the smart or all the iron plates should be coming down through here it'll take anything we need first off of here once it starts to get backed up which it eventually will it'll start going that way into that all right so it took a little bit of time because I've been running back and forth between all the machines making sure everything is right but I have checked every machine in this factory and every one of them after waiting for a little bit because some of them had to uh, let's say rev up to speed because they they had to wait for the other ones to fill up to get the material and stuff but yeah after a little bit of waiting now all of them is at 100 percent 100 percent efficiency every machine that was the goal we have now reached it i think the factory is running pretty smoothly i do for some odd reason have a line right there that is completely full and i don't know why but 
because this one over here is not. It just has something to do with uh, this line seems to be running a little faster than this one, or it's getting backed up down in there somewhere. So the next thing we're going to do, and, and you can do this uh, off camera, basically. This is You can do this in your own time. Go through the entire factory. Make sure you change every single line in the entire factory over to a Mark III belt. Also, Mark III lifts. Don't forget your lifts. And just double check, triple check every single one of them that you've changed them all. And that should help a lot more in getting parts and stuff where they need to go. All right, so now at this point, I think we can finish up and go ahead and go to phase two now that we got an efficient factory. So let's head over here to our storage containers right over here. And we're going to pick up all the ones what you need out of our storage containers. At this point, uh, after making sure everything is running properly and everything, we should have enough time in between that that there's enough parts in here that we need. Here is our versatile frameworks. We're going to need about 500 of these. So make sure you have enough space in your inventory to carry them all. Move on down to the next one. Let's see. We're going to need a uh, 100 of the automated wiring. All right. We'll take two of those out. Two stacks equals 100. And then I believe our last one here. Nope. That's rotors. Here we go. Smart plating. We need 500 smart plating. So we're going to need some space for that as well. Smart plating comes in stacks of 50, so we're going to need 10 stacks of that. All right, that should be everything we need. And we're going to go up to our space elevator. Once at the space elevator, let's load everything up. Just hold control, click each thing, and boom. Once you have it loaded, pull the lever down the seal. Once it's sealed, pull the lever down to send. And there we go. We have now completed phase two took me long enough uh but yeah i got y'all there and off to our robot overlords in the sky the parts will go unlocking phase two for us and that also unlocks a whole new mess of things for us to explore for future episodes so thanks once again everybody for tuning in i very much appreciate it thanks to just for all your views and everything it, it's been fantastic we're not done yet though there will be more how to satisfactory videos coming soon keep your eyes peeled on the channel uh probably for the next week or so i'm most likely going to be working on a couple of my other channels phoenix adventures and phoenix gaming um, trying to get some stuff done on those because i'm sort of a little burned out on satisfactory right now at the moment but i will be coming back to it i will be playing in between that i just want to try to get some stuff done on my other channels right now uh, and and play some different games so but again thank you everybody for all your support very much appreciate it stay tuned for the next episode and just keep the subscribes coming keep the likes coming hit that like button if you enjoyed this video and if i helped you at all then very much appreciate it. Also, make sure to leave your comments. Love to see all the comments and stuff that we have here. If you have any questions about anything we did, let me know. Uh, I try to answer every single question as fast as I can. Sometimes it takes me a little bit to answer people because I'm just really busy. Uh, but I do try to respond to every question that uh, I consider to be a question I can answer, so to speak. Sometimes I get some silly questions that I just I don't have an answer for that. So I just... I, I kind of ignore it, <laughs> uh, but I do appreciate it. So until next time, guys, wherever you are, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, and I will see you in the next video.